I've been doing dermal fillers for the past 15 years and I've come across a revelation in the past year which has really just blown me away and it's got to do with the longevity of dermal fillers. You know traditionally we've been told that dermal fillers last around 6, 12, maybe 18 months if you're lucky. If you ask most doctors who do dermal fillers, if you search the internet, if you ask any person who's had dermal fillers done, they're going to tell you that that's how long it lasts for, 6, 12, maybe 18 months if you're lucky. Some people even believe that it lasts a lot shorter than that. I hear all the time from patients, for example, that they feel their lip filler is gone after maybe a month. The perception really in the community is that dermal fillers only last a very short time. There's been quite a few cases to sort of make me feel otherwise. Like, for example, we've had over the years a lot of patients come in after having dermal fillers to their tear troughs many, many years ago, and they come back sometimes six, seven years later, and they have this puffiness under their eyes, this bulge, and most of the time the patients don't think it's a filler. They think the filler's gone many years ago, this is just me getting old, I'm getting baggy, puffy eyes now. I often suggest my patients that we should put some dissolver in, or hyaluronidase, which is a filler dissolver. So we do that, and almost miraculously, this bulge which has been there for many, many years has all of a sudden disappeared. This is a clear indication to me that that bulge was actually filler that had been sitting there for the past six, seven, eight years. And, and this is a bit unusual because you, you know we're told that the fillers last only six to 12 months, for example. And the reason why we've been looking into this more so of late is that we've had some patients, especially with filler around the eyes, which has been resilient to dissolving, and uh, has been there for a long time, we've sent them for an MRI. And what these MRIs are showing is that the filler is lasting for a lot longer than we think. And to talk about this today, I've invited Dr. Mobin Master, who is dual qualified in both radiology and cosmetic medicine. So he's the perfect doctor to investigate these sorts of issues. Dr. Mobin Master, who is, good to see you Mobin. Good to see you. Yeah. And Mobin is dual qualified. He is a cosmetic practitioner, as well as being a radiologist, very multi-talented. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know many people like you. And you also do a bit of DJ work as well. Oh, a little bit on the little side, bit. you know. Yeah. DJ and to a few friends, a couple of thousand now and then. <laughs> a man of many skills. Today we're gonna to talk about our experience. I've sent a few of my patients to Mobin uh, for MRI scans where we've had problems with um, say tear trough filler or lip filler or some some issues and I wanted to know exactly where the filler was placed and also you know the longevity on, and if it's still there or not and whether it was fat or filler and uh, Mobin's kindly um, done some amazing MRI scans for us and yeah let's let's talk about the findings that what, what we found on these MRIs. So I reported back to you, obviously, when you sent the request and the questions could be answered quite well. And I think MRI is a underused tool in a very brand new area that we're looking at. So you could see where the filler is, you can see where it is in the cheeks, you can see where it is in the lips, mm -hmm. and you can see how long it lasts, you can yeah. see whether it's infected. There's all sorts of uh, details that you can get out of the MRI. The lips, let's talk about the lips. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a case where um, this patient had quite a few mils of filler in her lips mm -hmm. over the years. Tell us what you saw on the MRI. So what was interesting is on a lot of the cases that you've sent me, I've seen mm -hmm. quite a few. This particular case, uh, you could actually see lip filler in the bottom, which was in under the mucosa, we call it the pink part, it's the mucosa. And you can see the filler in this area here. I could also see it under the pink in there, which is the location that we want yeah, to Yeah, that's where in. everyone injects, isn't it? Right that's right in the, the vermilion or the, the, standard pink, the red part of the lip. That's right. Yep. However, just above, and there's a muscle that's the sphincter around the mouth like this. Above the lip, like a moustache almost, just under the skin, there's all a bunch of filler up there. Yep. So Gavin can kind of tell us what the theory is that we both yeah, agree so on. I mean, we've sort of seen this over the years. You've seen this yourself, I'm sure, where patients, um, 
continually get more and more lip filler and it sort of doesn't really get that much bigger but then suddenly their lip starts to protrude forward like, like a duck. Mm -hmm. And um, these MRI scans, and I think really in the world, there have really been very few That's right. people doing these MRI scans of, of faces. I mean, there's no one really doing this. Mm -hmm. So this is like um, a, a, a new frontier almost in a way. And we're seeing this lip filler migrate upwards towards the nose. Where I see it clinically is where people have lip filler and they say, um, you know, three weeks later, it's all gone, doc. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's all gone. But it's not gone. I mean, we're wondering we're, whether it's gone up, I guess. And yeah. they have multiple top ups. They keep getting top ups. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, I think, with the whole dermal filler situation is that you forget what you look like before. Yes. And then you think, no, I, I don't I don't remember. <laughs> <That's a laughs> and you're walking, they're walking around like this. And I said, mm -hmm. are you sure you didn't look like that? And then you'd go back through their mm -hmm. photos on Instagram and say, see? So and I think mm -hmm. this deserves to be dissolved, I guess, yep. prior to refilling. Yep, it's an, it becomes a new norm. That's you, know, right. you, you, you actually become acclimatized. I think it takes about three or four days and you become acclimatized to the new you. Mm -hmm. So you actually need some, a doctor to keep you in line um, or your injector to keep you in line and say, hey, listen, you need to hold up here. And a good practitioner will do that. Won't they? They'll, right. they'll say, hey, hold up, you've had too much. Mm -hmm. um, you need to stop. Unfortunately, a lot of people are driven by money or by profit and uh, profiteering on this sort of thing is it results in patients who have these gigantic lips and they look weird and they, they, it's the and very, they it's very unattractive isn't it so very your theory is do you think that it lasts or it tracks over a period of time or pretty yeah. quickly well we I mean I mean the mouth is pretty active we're using our mouth, mouth muscles all the time the orbicularis oris that's continually contracting I mean it makes sense that it would move uh, over over time and interestingly these, these fillers that were placed in this patient's um, lips were placed there quite a while ago so the longevity of them is much much longer than the um, you know six to twelve months that we we you know surmise that, time. yeah that, that we surmise they last for but really they last for a very very long time but they're just migrating north like like birds I guess mm. do birds do that yeah. well I guess they might, yeah. I'm not sure what they well, do north south I'm not sure I'm not, I'm not <laughs> with that kind of stuff yeah. but interestingly I think that this is understudied because also MRI is quite expensive it can be at quite an expense and it has to come at a price point as well but if you're in yep. trouble you know do you mm -hmm. feel that it's a good tool. Absolutely. Look, I've only been starting to refer to you over the past maybe year or so. So it's um, been a real eye opener for me. I mean, if I'm ever in doubt mm -hmm. of what to do and I need to know whether there's filler there or not, or whether it's fat or filler, say for example, like the eyes is another case mm -hmm. where we've studied, uh, I've sent you a few patients where the where there's been swelling under the eyes and I don't know whether it's old filler or whether it's fat and maybe we've dissolved it a few times and it's been resilient to, to dissolving. So I've sent them to you and you know, some, again, some of these fillers have been there for quite a number of years. And yeah, we, we found some interesting things, didn't we? Uh, Very the interesting eye. stuff, particularly around the, the eye area and I'm not sure whether it's because of the lack of movement. We know that mm -hmm. cheeks, we quote, what, 12 months? Yeah. Up to 18 maybe? I've traditionally quoted that, yeah. Yeah, 12 to yeah. 18. And you've sent me some cases where they've they've had filler over a year or two years ago, and I still see a signal um, of filler in that area. So yep. you can see on the MRI image. So for example, uh, this case, mm -hmm. you can see on we call it T2 fat sat. It's a specific mm -hmm. sequence. You can see this bright stuff mm -hmm. in the cheek area, and that's evidence of dermal filler. Mm -hmm. The black stuff is fat. So it's, so it's like night and day. It's, it's bright and yeah. very obvious. It's, yeah. it's bright. It, it basically follows signal of fluid mm -hmm. and it's very different to fat. So if you there see you go, this area here, I can see on the picture there, I'm pointing to the eyelid area and the eyelid, you can tell the difference between the black, which is fat, and then the bright stuff, which mm -hmm. is dermal filler. Quite ridiculous how, how, you can, how well you can tell these two apart. And, and if, you were, if you didn't have an MRI, you'd just have no chance of doing that clinically. Well, you can't tell the difference yeah. between swelling of or causes of what's enlarging the face. Is it fat? Is it filler? And that's a key question that we always have when it comes to bulging of the uh, lower eyelids is that is it fat or is it filler? Because if it's filler, we can dissolve it. If it's fat and they have bulging that they don't like, they have, they have to go surgery. for surgery. That's yeah. right. So it answers a very important clinical question for us, which, um, which we wouldn't have been able to answer otherwise. Hmm. Yeah. So it is an excellent tool. And mm -hmm. as we showed, Previously, you can see the tracking, that high signal, that bright stuff going up along the top of the lip like a moustache, 
and then underneath you can see the filler along that pink area mm -hmm. there. A few of these patients also, they've had filler you know, placed in cheeks or in other parts of the face. We've also seen them um, persist for a number of years. So these fillets have been done many years ago and mm. despite that they're, they've remained and, and they're shown to be there by the MRI. So we have MRI evidence, uh, thanks to Mobin's um, MRIs uh, of filler that really lasts. But brings up a question, you know, people always ask, they always say my filler's gone after a few months. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, people say it all the time, don't they? I mean, very, you, you, very you heard that, right? And Doc, I need to, you know, fill up now. It's six months. Do you, do you think it's I... expectations or do you think it's because they, they think it's going to last six to That's 12 right. months? We've, we've been told that it lasts six to 12 yep. months and say, Doc, I'm up for my next fill. And yep. I look at them as well. And I guess I'm lucky in that mm -hmm. I interpret imaging. Mm -hmm. So I can visualize the MRI and I can see on that scan, You're a human the MRI machine. Face, <laughs> the X-ray vision. <laughs> yeah. And I can see that the cheeks are still extremely full. That's and if amazing. I fill them up more, they end yep. up looking like a chipmunk. Yep. So you have to be mm -hmm. conservative and you have to have an approach where you're not so money driven, as you said, yep. and you do the right thing by the patient and that's how you get a long-term plan yep. and a better result in the end. You know, I've, had, I've, I've got patients where I've seen a long time ago and you don't see them for a while and they've maybe gone see another practitioner and they've had filler and filler and filler. And then you see them maybe several years later and their face has just expanded. Mm. It's quite ridiculous and they've lost that beautiful slender shape to their face. It looks a bit watery and a bit swollen. Yes, you know, it do looks you have, like do you swelling, it looks it's got that transparent look. Exactly, you know that is the, that's that the difference between fat and blown up filler. face and you look at it and you look at their lips mm -hmm. and you don't see the nice sort of normal linear yeah, lines and creases see, yeah. in the lips, they're expanded so much yep. that it looks like you could look straight through it. Yep. That, you know what that, I mean? That's it's a, a really great description. kind of appearance and the cheeks look transparent. It, it, it just looks, and it looks weird. And based on the MRIs you've shown, it's, it's another important thing that um, you've, you've told me about from these MRIs is that maybe when patients are saying that their filler goes, um, say you feel someone's cheek and they say six months later it's gone. It's not actually gone, it's actually like the lips, they've migrated to a different area. So that's is right. that something, you know, that, that's something we've, you've seen? We've seen interesting cases mm -hmm. and we've seen the places that it can go. And mm -hmm. when you're injecting, you know, you attempt, we attempt with a cannula or whether it's with a needle to try to be as accurate as possible. However, I, my, I theorize that it runs along a plane. So if you're going along the bone, say for example, the cheek with a cannula, it tracks and I've seen cases where it goes all the way and not of any consequence. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Years later, it's sitting there and it's sort of above the bone behind yep. the teeth there. Just a little dollop sitting yep, there. So that's it, right. Mm -hmm. I think it's flying a bit further than we think. Exactly. I think one of the patients I sent you had, I injected filler out here and it sort of migrated to the mid cheek um, or migrated around the other side. So after it, it took about four, I think it was four or five years ago we injected her or I injected wow. her four or five years ago. So. And that, so that, that may be part of the reason why people are saying that their fill is not lasting. It's not that it's not lasting, it's actually moving. Is it migrating? Is it migrating? And I guess the face is, in a way, almost like a bottomless pit. If you can find nooks and crannies to put filler in, mm -hmm. and you, you, know, you can put a mill or two here, and you, you probably won't see much of an effect if it sort of goes into these nooks and crannies. And eventually, if you keep putting more and more in, you just you do get a general expansion, expansion of the face. Expansion of the, of the just, entire yeah, cranium and, a, and facial <laughs> to, bones. To explode. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I, I think we need to work out it. where will it go in terms of maybe the areas of mm -hmm. lowest resistance, yes, right? That's so good. around the eye, if you're up against the bone, what is it going to do? I think it'll try to go, if you're injected here, it'll try to go into the eyelid with, where it's softer, or if it's just below the bone here, it maybe it'll try to go down. Mm -hmm. This is all stuff that needs to be looked into, and over, I think in the next 10 years, we're mm -hmm. gonna come up with some very interesting stuff and find Definitely. out a lot of new things that are gonna have a few surprises. Yep, that, it's, it's pretty scary. So, I mean, has this changed my practice? Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've been thinking about these things for quite a number of years, but Mobin has proven this mm. to me uh, with his MRIs of my patients. And thanks to your referrals. Thank, thank you, thank you. Um, so really, um, my practice has changed in many ways in that I'm injecting a lot less. I'm injecting a lot of, um, say, much less frequently, firstly, mm -hmm. and much smaller amounts. So I might take one mil, which is typically used for one area, 
you know, you get one syringe. Most people say one syringe, one area, like lip or one syringe in the cheek. I, I, but I put it in like four different areas, five different areas, like, right. in, and do that once a year now. Um, and that's sort of, I feel enough in keeping with the overall volume loss that you get with aging, because as we age, we shrivel. Mm. So all I want to do is just maintain, you know, I don't want to be, be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it kind yeah. of makes sense that someone's not going to just lose volume in the cheeks. So you refill the cheeks, yeah. that's not in keeping with their anatomy. That is a very good point. So Absolutely. So then the cheeks are out of... The whole face, yep. basically. That's exactly right. In small yep. volumes. You mentioned to me previously that you know people, we should be um, taking a lot more care. This is your words. You said mm. that we should take a lot more care with fillers and really treat them as a semi-permanent. Yeah, that's that, right. That's what you said treat to it, me. Treat it with respect. So yeah. I think there's certain brands which we can't discuss Mm -hmm. due to Australian rules, yep. some of them we can theorize do not last as long. Mm -hmm. So the way in which I practice is to use the ones that do not last very long and I'm pretty convinced that they don't, but I'm sure after six months, all of them, and I visualize the MRI that mm -hmm. there will still be residue. There's still bits and yep. pieces. So I think people need to think of sugar and sugar and water and it becomes that gritty kind of stuff mm -hmm. and it just sits there. Okay. And it slowly goes away. Mm -hmm. I feel that you do that, if you like that look. So then you can use a more permanent, I guess you call mm -hmm. it permanent type hyaluronic acid yep. type filler, which has a different technology that seems to last longer mm -hmm. because I fear putting in something that is not a great or the result that they want. And then mm -hmm. if it establish itself after a year, it's harder to get rid of. What do you mm -hmm. think about that? Absolutely. Look, I would say I've had quite a few cases where we've try to dissolve filler that has been there for years, mm. especially the ones around the eyes. And, you know, sometimes it does take several goes or it's, you know, it's been hard to dissolve and hence I've sent them to you for MRIs to see whether they're still there or not. Still any left. Mm. And it's, it's quite recalcitrant once it establishes itself. So Absolutely. I guess with your patients, mm -hmm. what we could do is wait for that year and say, are you happy with how it looks mm -hmm. or prior to that year and make sure we review them. Mm -hmm. And then if they're not, get rid of it because once yep. it stays after a year, it's gonna be very hard to get rid of. That would be a good an excellent strategy. That, that This is all very, again, new new uh, frontier stuff. This is, you know, this is the cutting edge. Right really. on the edge and yeah, interesting no, things gonna happen. No one's sure. really thinking this. At it's very end. fluid at the yeah. moment, isn't it? Very fluid, <laughs> no pun intended. I wonder what impact this video will have on the general public and- And injectors alike. And injectors, yeah. I, I wonder whether we can help to start a change here hmm. because there is a lot of, it's become commercialized now, hasn't it? Um, you know, right. fillers. Uh, you see specials, half price specials, uh, get your lips done for half the usual price. And as a result, I'm seeing a few patients who have been going to these, uh, you know, maybe slightly discounted, cheaper clinics and getting mm. things pumped into their face, syringe after syringe, not knowing or understanding what's going on. And they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they, they really, they, they've lost sight of what, what is reality. And mm. The injectors um, also are not helping either because they're just continuing to pump they're more fillers. Pumping them. Yeah, they're pumping. pumping the fillers into them. And which what's is scary not is, is as they're pumping more and more, they're going into all the layers of the face. And then I mm. think in my mind, all these people that have all mm. this stuff everywhere, yeah. it's going to get tough to get rid of if you want to get rid of any of it. Yep, absolutely. You know? it, it's, it's not easy to sculpt, as you know. Mm -hmm. And after a period of time, once it establishes, and who knows what established means? Mm -hmm. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. What, what are we going to do? Yeah, I'd love to see in the community where there are some the more consistent sort of firmer guidelines as to how much filler is is appropriate and safe, mm -hmm. per, mm -hmm. say per annum, okay. and who's injecting it, you know, because it's all about, like you said before, about placement and treating it like a semi-permanent uh, filler. It's temporary. It's a temporary filler. They say it's temporary. But they say it, it's more temporary than we actually... Uh, believe. I think mm -hmm. now Gavin and I are on the same page, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. That we now fear filler a little bit more and realize yep. that no, it doesn't completely go away. So yep. we've got to get this right. And you want to get it right first time. First time, first shot. So we'll leave you with that, I think. Maybe leave some comments below and let us know what you think. Yeah, start the discussion on this uh, topic. On this. What, how what, long does filler last? How long does filler last? Mm. Is it permanent, semi permanent, or yeah. temporary? Is it the product? Is it the placement? Is it the location? Mm -hmm. I think it's all those things. Mm -hmm. See you later. Thanks See you for later. watching. <laughs>